Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about a very important part of Unity's Entity Component System and that is the Entity Manager. Now the Entity Manager is something that we're going to be interfacing with very frequently because it's what we use to actually create, read, modify, and destroy entities. And because we're using it so frequently in Unity's ECS, it's important for us to understand how it works and some of the limitations that it has so we can be best prepared to well, use it properly in our games. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to use the Entity Manager as well as some of the problems and limitations with using it. And this video is also going to serve as a nice primer for the next video where we're going to be talking about Entity command buffers which solve some of the problems with entity managers anyways if you do find today's video helpful and you learned something i would really appreciate if you hit that like button also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about unity's entity component system and other features coming to the unity game engine of course if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on discord over at tmg.dev discord so first off what is an entity manager so as the name suggests it's a manager that manages entities within a world now a world is basically an isolated collection of entities and systems, and only systems within a world can talk to entities within that same world. Now each and every world is only gonna have exactly one entity manager, and again, that's gonna allow us to um, basically create and destroy entities. We can use it to add and remove components from entities. Then we can also read from as well as write to those components so we can kind of like modify and have things happen in our game. Now this all sounds well and good, and to be honest, the entity manager isn't really that difficult to use as you'll see when we get to the tutorial section of this video, but the problem comes when we need to make structural changes in our game. So a structural change is basically when we're like doing things like creating entities or adding and removing components from entities uh, because this changes the actual structure of them and then thus it changes where in memory that particular entity resides. Now the problem with this is it creates a sync point. And a sync point is basically a spot in your code where all the scheduled jobs wait to be completed before executing the code you know, on the main thread. So basically these structural changes have to happen on the main thread no matter what. And again, sync points are created when entities are created or destroyed, or if we're adding or removing components to and from entities, or if we're changing data on a shared component. And so of course, because these structural changes need to take place on the main thread, it's basically in our best interest to minimize the amount of sync points that we make in our game. Now, in the next video, when we talk about entity command buffers, I'll be showing you know one way that we can minimize those. Um, but again, when we're just directly doing these operations on the entity manager, it's going to create a sync point in our code right there, which is definitely not ideal. And just to give you an idea about what exactly happens when we just add a single component to an entity, I'm gonna read something from the um, ECS best practice guys that Unity has up on their website. I'll include a link to it down in the description below. But this basically goes over what happens when you just add a simple component to an entity and you see how many steps are involved in this. So basically, if we were to add C component to an entity of archetype AB, we'll end up with an entity of archetype ABC. So first we need to check whether entity archetype ABC already exists. If the entity archetype doesn't already exist, we'll create it. Archetype ABC now contains a list of pointers to chunks. We check to see if any of these chunks have space for a new entity. If we don't, we'll have to allocate a new chunk. Next, we'll use the C++ memcpy function, which copies the components A and B from our original entity into the new chunk. Then we'll create or copy a component C into the same chunk. Next, we'll update the entity manager so that the entity which previously pointed to an index of AB chunk now points to our new index of ABC chunk. Then we'll remove the original entity from the AB chunk using swap back. If the original entity was the only entity in the chunk, we can free up that chunk memory because it's empty now. If it wasn't the last entity in the chunk, the swap back function has just changed the index of one of the other entities in the chunk. So now we'll just need to update the entity manager again so that the entity we just moved mapped to the new index. If a new chunk has been allocated or a chunk has been deallocated, we'll need to clear the cached list of chunks for every entity query that involves that chunk's archetype. The entity query recalculates the list of chunks it refers to the next time it executes. So you see that the computer has to go through a number of steps when we just wanna do something simple like adding a component to an entity. Now, none of these things really take a lot of processing power, but you can imagine if we extrapolate this over many, many entities, it's gonna take a lot of processing power. 
Luckily, there are ways to optimize this so we can kind of batch things together if we're, you know, adding one component to a bunch of entities. And so there's kind of like a hierarchy of how you should ideally make changes to entities. So the first and most ideal situation is to make changes on a full entity query where we're basically doing operations on whole chunks. That's going to be the most performant way. Um, basically, you can batch a bunch of things together. And then if we're doing you know, operations on a full chunk, it's a lot easier for the computer to do rather than just kind of like piecemealing individual entities. Now, if for some reason we can't make any changes on a full entity query, the next best thing to do is make changes um, on a native array of entities. And basically this is gonna give us a little bit extra performance because it knows um, basically the scope of how many entities and what entities it needs to update. So it can make some optimizations when we're making some changes, but again, it's not going to be as performant as updating a full entity query. And then basically the, the lowest, the thing that you want to avoid at all possibilities is just modifying individual entities. It's something that you really should only do when necessary um, because again, it's not really going to be performant because the computer is going to be having to go to different places of memory and it can't make the same optimizations that it can if we're updating a native array of entities or a full entity query. Okay, so now we'll get into the tutorial section of this video. By the way, all the code and project files featured in today's video are gonna be available using the links in the description below. Now then, over in Unity, I have this pretty simple scene set up. I just kinda of have this little plane here, um, and we're gonna be using the entity manager to spawn a bunch of entities on this plane. Um, so the one thing that I do already have set up is this entity spawn data authoring script. Um, well, I just use the generate authoring component, but I basically just have um, an entity prefab here. So we're going to be spawning these capsules. And then we have a spawn grid of size eight by eight. And then we're going to have uh, three units of spacing in between each entity. So here's what that data component looks like. Just pretty standard data component, nothing too exciting going on there. And now we'll move over to the spawn entities system. So I have just a couple things set up already, basically just um, kind of getting ready for um, where we're going to be positioning these entities in our game world. Uh, but here, the first thing that we're actually going to need reference to is the entity manager. Now, there are a number of ways that we can actually reference the entity manager. And like I said, every world has its own entity manager. Right now, I'm just using the default game object injection world. So we can access that by just creating a variable called entity manager. And then we'll set this equal to world dot default game object injection world dot entity manager. So whatever world that we have, we can basically just do if you just have a reference to that world, you can just do a dot entity manager and then you'll get your entity manager for that particular world. For just the default game object injection world, there's actually a couple of easier ways that we can get to it. So we can just do a world dot entity manager or more simply, we can just do uh, an entity manager just like that. So as we go along in the code, I'm not even gonna use the variable. I'm just gonna use uh, the regular property entity manager because when I'm programming, I normally just do that because it's um, basically just the easiest. So first things first, I'm just gonna show you how to create some empty entities. So the way that we're actually gonna do that, I just have these nested for loops that's going um, on the grid size X and Y. And so we can just say var new entity is equal to entity manager dot create entity and that is literally all we need to do to create an empty entity right now this isn't doing anything um, so if we just actually come back over to unity and then we enter play mode now you'll see that we now have a bunch of different entities and basically these are all just empty entities so if you can just click on any random one of these you'll see that there's nothing over here in the inspector and it's not being used by any systems now the only reason that you would want to do this is if you want to create your own entities like you didn't want to make them from a prefab or something like that um, this is basically just creating a brand new entity and then you would handle you know, adding individual components to it and setting components and things of that nature. Um, another thing that you can do is inside here, you can actually pass in the archetype of an entity. So if you store the archetype as a variable, basically just, you know, you would create an archetype um, actually with the entity manager with the all the component types that you would want to have on it. And then you can just pass that into this function. I'm not going to go over that right now because I think going over entity archetypes would be a topic for its own dedicated video. So now if we'd like to create an entity based off of a prefab, there's another function that we can use, which is the entity manager dot instantiate. And then inside here, we actually pass in the prefab entity that we want to use. 
which in this case is going to be on the entity spawn data and it's just our entity prefab here. Now what instantiate does is it basically creates a copy of this entity. However, it's going to be slightly different because it doesn't actually include the prefab or the I system state component data components. Basically, those are things that are just only on the prefab component. So this basically just creates a copy of that prefab and then spawns it within our world. So now if we just did this, we can come over to Unity and we can hit play. And it looks like there's only one entity in our world, but if we actually come down to our entity debugger, you'll see that we have a bunch of these capsule clones here. And we can just pick on any one of these and then we can see all the components that it has on this by default. So now we spawn basically 64 entities into our world and they're all sitting at one position. So how do we actually get these to spread out across the grid like we want it to? So I've just created this um, little helper function called calculate transform. Again, this is kind of out of the scope of the video, but that's basically how it works if you wanna see it. And then it sets up this local to world variable called new position. And then now how do we actually go about setting that with on our entities? So it's pretty easy. Again, we're just gonna use the entity manager. So we'll just do an entity manager dot set component data. And then all we need to do is just pass in the new entity as well as the new position. And then basically just like magic, it knows what component type that we're trying to set. And then it's going to set that on our entity. So come back over to Unity right here. And then when we hit play, you'll see that all 64 of our capsules spawn and they're nicely distributed across um, this whole grid right here. So next thing I'm gonna show is how to add components. So basically what I'm gonna do on this is every other component, we're basically just going to add a tag to it called the oscillating tag. And again, it's pretty easy. We just do an entity manager dot add component. Inside the type brackets, we'll do the oscillating tag. And then inside the parentheses, we'll just pass in the new entity right here. And this is basically the same syntax you do for removing components. It's the exact same thing. So now that every other entity has this oscillating tag, it's going to be affected by this oscillating system right here, which is basically just going to move the entities up and down. So we'll come back over to Unity, go ahead and enter play mode, and you'll see that every other entity is now basically just kind of oscillating up and down because every other entity has that oscillating tag on it. So then the final thing I'm gonna show you how to do is how to actually destroy entities. So now if you'll remember going back to kind of that hierarchy of how we want to ideally perform operations with the entity manager, Remember the most ideal situation is to basically do operations on an entity query. So we'll make a new entity query to get everything with the oscillating tag. So just create a variable called oscillator query. And we'll also be using the entity manager to create a new query. So all we do is entity manager dot create entity query. And inside here, we can basically just type in as many component types that we want to filter out by. All we need right now is one. So here we can just do type of oscillating tag so that will create our new entity query and then finally we can just do an entity manager dot destroy entity and then inside here we'll just pass in the oscillator query so again this is going to happen when we press the d key so we'll come back over to unity just go ahead and hit play again you'll see that everything with the oscillating tag is now oscillating and then when i hit the d key again it's going to destroy everything with the oscillating tag so you see that now we're just left with the entities that do not have that specific tag. And then finally, if you're just so fed up with ECS right now and you just wanna destroy everything, we can just go ahead and go to the entity manager and then we'll do a destroy and reset all entities just like that. So if we come back over to Unity and enter play mode, now we just hit the A key and then we just nuke our entire scene. All entities are gone, come over to the entity debugger and we literally have nothing besides world time. So anyways, that's a basic overview of how to use the Entity Manager. There are some other useful things that you can do with the Entity Manager, such as moving entities from another world into this world. Um, but most of that is all pretty straightforward. And if you're reading through the documentation, you should be able to pick up on that stuff pretty easily. But anyways, I do hope that today's video helped you understand the Entity Manager a little bit better. If it did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's Entity Component System and their data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. But I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.